So when I was a teenager, I got really excited by a film called The Heroes of Telemark. This is how it was. This is where it happened. About six Norwegian commandos who raided a factory making heavy water, D2O, and destroyed the plant, frustrating German plans to make an atom bomb. Stay quiet. Stay close. Stay with us. Come right inside the heavy water plant at Telemark. And the whole raid was done without injuring anybody. Over the years, I've read several books about it, including a really nice one here called Skis Against the Atom. Wonderful title, written by one of the guys who actually took part in the raid. Then, out of the blue, just a few weeks ago, I got an email from a guy called John Pearson, who'd seen our video on heavy water, where I mentioned this raid. And he said that his father, Sid Pearson, had been involved as a technician making the film, The Heroes of Telemark, at the plant where the heavy water is still made. He also said that his father, when the filming ended, was presented with a sample of heavy water by the plant as a souvenir. And John Pearson had this sample of heavy water sitting on the shelf in his study and offered to give it to me so that I could show it to my students and people who are interested in chemistry. So of course I said yes, and here it is. And you can see it's got a beautiful label saying deuterium oxide with a picture of a Viking longship on it. And the lid is nailed down, but you can pull it off. And inside is a really nice polished stainless steel tube, which has at the top a picture of the Viking longship. And on the front here has the label of the company, Norse Hydro, which made the heavy water. It's called Hydro because it's a hydroelectric company using this cheap electricity to electrolyze water so that you can isolate the heavy water. This is real heavy water, and I will unscrew the container. See, I dropped it. <laughs> and inside is the vial of heavy water. With my shaky hands, I don't trust myself to take it out, but I'll let you take it out to show our viewers. Well, I think they blew up mostly the tanks that contained the heavy water and part of the electrolysis plant. Sadly, from the point of view of history, it was repaired fairly quickly. In that case, answer me this. How long will it take before production gets back into high gear again? So a second attack had to be made, and this was also in the film, in which the train or the two tanker cars taking the heavy water away from the plant, they were sabotaged on a ferry that was taking them across the fjord. You probably know in Norway they have these narrow fingers of the sea going in which are very deep. So if something sinks you can't easily salvage them again. This was successful, the tanks went to the bottom but sadly, several people who were innocent passengers on the ferry were killed. In wartime, presumably, it was felt that this was a risk worth taking to prevent the heavy water getting into the hands of those who might have built an atom bomb. Heavy water is important because in a nuclear reactor, the important thing is to control 
neutrons, the neutrons that cause the uranium to split, to um, undergo fission. And ordinary water absorbs neutrons very strongly, whereas heavy water, which contains deuterium, does not. So you can make a nuclear reactor using uranium and heavy water. And you need the water to remove the heat because otherwise the uranium would overheat and you'd get a bomb or an explosion while you were still doing the reaction to produce presumably the plutonium that they wanted to produce. Experimentation with heavy water, that's all. With deuterium oxide. Yes, yes, we know. So Norway was occupied by Germany, was it? It was invaded in 1940. The commandos that carried out this raid escaped to the UK. They were trained in sabotage in Scotland, and then they were flown back to Norway for this raid. The explosions only destroyed the tanks inside. And my understanding was that they were like several hundred litres. It was not a, like an oil refinery. You want to know what it's all about? All right. I'll tell you. That's what it's all about. You understand? What are you going to do with that now? So, well, at the moment, I'm keeping it in my study. And when, after the pandemic, I go back to my office at the university, I may well take it there. And I'm really pleased to have my own sample of heavy water and to show people and to inspire young scientists of the future, especially with the great story about this particular sample. The other thing is that it turns out Sid Pearson, John's father, made films or took part in the making of lots of my favourite films from when I was young. There's a web link which will show you a list of everything that he made so you can see how productive he was. And this is a great souvenir to have and a great way to continue the memory of a very talented technician. That Martin Polykoff has been on at us to do for a while, so we're finally, finally going to get, it, get around to doing it. He's very excited about it. And what we're going to talk about is, is deuterium oxide, okay? So deuterium oxide um, is often referred to as, as heavy water. 